This is the second video in a two-part series about working with SharePoint list views. In this video, I will demonstrate how you can create list views that implement sorting, grouping, and aggregate functions. I'll also demonstrate how you can edit, delete, and share a view. And then I will end off by demonstrating how you can create a gallery and board type view. Now, if you haven't seen the first video in the series, I've included a link in the description of this video below, or you can just click that card in the upper right hand corner of your screen, bookmark it and check it out after you finish watching this one. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, next I will demonstrate how you can incorporate grouping in your SharePoint list views. Now on the edit view page, you'll notice that there is a group by section. And here, this is where you can specify up to two group by conditions. Now grouping essentially collapses your data into groupings that you will define. Now with this specific view that I will build out, I would like to group my items first by the year on which the sale took place. And then I would like to group the items by the month in which the sale took place. Now, what I will do is I will select in this first group by column, the year field that I have. And you can see here, the field is called year due. And then I will select the second group by column and that is called month due. And here I would like to display the grouping in descending order. So I would like the largest year to appear first. And then for the month, I would like to display the month in the ascending order. That is the earliest month to the latest. Now, when it comes to applying grouping, you also have the option to either display your data in the collapsed view or expanded. Now, collapsed means that you're going to see your group headers first, and expanded means that you are going to actually just see the individual rows that comprise those groupings. Now, you can also set the number of groups to display per page, leave this value to 30, and next I'll scroll down and click OK. And you can see here that my data has now been collapsed and you can see the first group header and that is year due 2025. And then the second group header is year due 2024. Now to expand your grouping, you wanna click on this little arrow. And now you can see the second group by column, which is the month. And if I go ahead and click on this, then it will actually display the rows that comprise this grouping. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, then you might also be interested in my SharePoint list fundamentals on demand course that I am going to be launching in the coming weeks. Now, whether you're new to SharePoint list or you're an experienced user, this course will have something in it for you. It will cover the basics from creating lists and columns right through to more advanced topics like SharePoint list permissions. Now you can get early access and unlock early bird pricing by simply clicking the link that I've included in the description of this video below to get yourself on the wait list. Now, once you sign up for the wait list, you wanna make sure that you confirm your email address and you wanna make sure that you add my email address to your favorites so that you don't miss out on the launch announcement when I send it. Now let's get back to the video. All right, next I will demonstrate how you can incorporate sorting in your views. Now on the edit view page, you'll notice here that there is a sort block and you can see that it will allow you to implement up to two sort conditions. Now sorting essentially means ordering the data in your list based on a specific column and the corresponding values. Now to apply a sort, you simply want to select the column on which you would like to sort your data. Now I will go ahead and select the total column, and then you want to select whether you would like to display your data in either ascending order or descending order. Now I want my list to display the items in descending order, that is with the highest totals appearing at the top and the lowest totals appearing at the bottom. So I will select this option and then scroll down and click OK. And you can see here that my list is now sorted based on the total column. And you can also tell that the sort was applied because you're seeing this arrow that appears to the right of the column name. 
All right, next I'll demonstrate how you can incorporate totals into your SharePoint list views. Now I've gone ahead and created a new view here that displays quantity and then unit price and some of the different currency columns. Now what I will do is build a view that is going to display the average quantity and the average unit price for the list items that I'm displaying and that will also display the total amounts for tax, the total subtotal, and then the total total amount. All right, now you can see here I've navigated to our edit view page and I will scroll right to the bottom and you'll see here that there is a grouping option that reads totals. You wanna go ahead and click on this and you can see here that this will display the columns that are featured and you'll notice that you have a total dropdown field for each column. Now what I will do is I will click into the quantity dropdown and once I do this, you can see here that you can use various numerical calculations. So you can tabulate counts, averages, maximum, minimum, sum, standard deviation, and variance. Now what I will do is select the average. So I would like to know the average quantity of products sold. And for the subtotal, what I will do here is I will set this to sum, and then I'm going to set the tax amount and total to sum as well. Now you can see here, I've gone ahead and updated my total fields. Next, I'll scroll to the bottom of the list and click OK. And you can see here that at the very bottom of the screen, it is going to display those different aggregate functions. So you can see for quantity and unit price, it's displaying the average. And then for my currency columns, it is displaying the sum. Now, what's really cool about using the total function in views is that even if you use the real time filters on the list, these values will update. Now I'll go ahead and I will select the payment status dropdown. And here I will select filter by and I will click on unpaid and click apply. And you can see here that my list has been filtered and you can see here that these totals have now updated as well. So using these totals in conjunction with the live filters are very useful for being able to calculate different values. Now it's really important to note that when you're using these live or quick filters, these filters will not actually be saved on the view. Now to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into the edit view page and I will edit this view. And if I scroll down to the filter group, you can see here that there is no filter condition applied. And if I just go ahead and scroll back up and click cancel, you can see here that the payment status filter has been removed and the list has now reverted to its original view definition. Next, I'll demonstrate how to edit, delete a view. Now to edit a view, simply switch to the view that you would like to edit. Now I'll go ahead and select this headphone view. And once the view has been selected, click back into the switch view options menu and then click edit current view. And again, that will bring you into the edit view menu where you can modify this view. Now, if you would like to delete a view, you want to navigate to the view edit page. And you can see here at the top of this page, I have the option to delete this view. Simply click on this button. You are going to receive this confirmation prompt. Click OK. And if I click back into the switch view options menu, you can see here that headphones is no longer displayed. All right, now to share a link to a view, you want to switch to the view that you would like to generate a URL for. Now I will go ahead and switch from all items to largest to smallest total view. Now, before I click this, I want you to pay attention to the URL field. As I make the change, you're going to notice that this view ID value is going to update. Now I'll go ahead and click on this and you can see here that the view ID changed. Now all you need to do is copy and paste this URL and it will bring users who click on that URL directly into the view. Now I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. I've opened a new tab and I will paste in this URL and click enter. And you can see here that it brought me directly into the list and it applied that view.
All right, next I'll demonstrate how to create a gallery view. Now you can see here I've brought up the create view menu and I've given this view a name. Now I'll select the gallery option and I'll go ahead and click create. Now you can see here that the gallery view was created. Now with the gallery view, you do have some limited options as to how you can customize the actual item cards. Now to do this, you want to click into the switch view options menu, and then you want to click on format current view. And next you want to click on the card designer edit card button. And this will display a content pane where you can select the fields that you would like displayed on the card items. Now to add fields, you simply want to check them here. And you can see as I do this, it will continue to add them to the card. And if you want to remove them, you can just uncheck them. And again, you can see here that they're disappearing. Now you can also rearrange the order of the fields by clicking on the ellipsis and then clicking move up or move down. And you can see here that that's going to shift the order of the fields. You can also just click and hold and drag the field into the desired position. And again, you can see here that the card updated. Now, once you're ready to commit these changes, you wanna go ahead and click save. And you can see here that your changes have been saved. Now, one other note, if you click on the advanced mode button, this will bring you into the format view pane. Now, when it comes to gallery views, you can actually customize the appearance of these cards to add icons, color coding, you can change the formatting of the text and so much more using JSON code. Now, if you want to learn more about SharePoint list JSON formatting, you can download my list of the top free resources, including JSON sample code that you can just copy and paste in your list. I've included a link where you can download your copy of that list in the description of this video below. All right, next I will demonstrate how to create a board view. Now I've switched to a different list just to make this example more relevant. So you can see here that in this list, I am storing information about project tasks. Now, if you're curious how I implemented these conditional formatting fields here, I do have a tutorial that demonstrates how you can do that. And I've included a link to that tutorial in the description of this video below. Now you can see here, I've brought up the create view menu and I've given this view a name. Next, I'll click on the board type and you can see here that it added a field to this form. Now this is asking you which column you would like to group your tasks by. And I'll go ahead and click into the dropdown and you can see here that there is only one option and that is task status. Now it's really important to note that when you're working with board views, you'll only be able to organize your boards by choice type columns. Now I'll go ahead and select task status and I'll click create. And you can see here that it has created this Kanban board view where my tasks are being grouped by their respective status. Now this board view functions very similar to Microsoft Planner. Now I can simply grab these cards and I can actually drag them into a different board and that is going to update the corresponding status field. Now, if you want to edit your board view, you want to click into the switch view options menu and you want to click edit current view. And you'll notice that this is going to bring you into the limited edit view menu where you can only change the organized board by field. Now, if you wanted to actually apply additional filters to this view, what you want to do is click on the settings icon and you want to click on list settings. And next you want to scroll down and you can see here the menu group views. You want to go ahead and click into your board view and this will bring you into the full edit view menu where you can apply filters or change which fields you would like displayed. So that's it. That wraps up the two part series about working with SharePoint list views. Now, if you found this video helpful, I'd recommend that you get yourself on the wait list for my SharePoint list fundamentals on demand course. Waitlist members will get early access to the course and they will also unlock early bird pricing. To get yourself on the waitlist, all you need to do is click the link in the description below, sign up with your email, and then confirm your subscription to receive the launch announcement. This course will be coming soon and you don't want to miss out. I'm Louis Yacobalas. I'll see you in the next video.